So good morning, everybody. Isn't synchronicity in the universe a wonderful thing? It is this month, 25 years ago, exactly this month, 25 years ago, that the first paper describing a data warehouse architecture was published, which shows my age. Because it was my work over the previous two or three years that created that architecture. So to some extent, you might consider that this is my baby. And you can imagine my feelings when Ed came to me and said, I'd like you to do a keynote announcing the death of the data warehouse. So with thanks to MGM. So the heat death of the universe. Yeah, you know, my PhD is in physical chemistry, so I used to be able to explain the second law of thermodynamics. That was 30 years ago. I can't do it anymore. But with apologies to the physicists, entropy is this sort of disorder, this unpredictable, unpredictability that sort of increases um, gradually or perhaps quickly, if you don't do any work in a closed system. And there is a theory of, of the universe, of the end of the universe in cosmology, that as the um, nuclear processes run down and all the hydrogen turns to helium and all the helium goes into heavier elements, etc., etc., that you run out of energy. And entropy or disorder will increase to a maximum. And so no further work is possible, no further work can be done. So how would you apply that concept, that thought, to Data Warehouse? So I just put in this picture of the Data Warehouse in the, in the original article. And you can see that in the center of it, there is this, this element, this logical conglomeration of data where the data has been structured, it has been cleansed, it has been brought together, it has been made uh, consistent, it has been made a clean from all of the various sources that it came from. And that requires work. And very clearly, if you don't continue to do such work, well, what will happen is that you will eventually end up with the heat death of the data warehouse because you will have completely dispersed data. You will have completely disorganized data. You will have a total lack of structure. And from our point of view as business people, that means no work can be done, right? It's very hard to do a lot of work if you don't know what's going on and what's it about. So what about this? Is this possible? Can it be that we've got data disorder and unpredictability? Well, I say to you, absolutely yes. From the very beginning of this data warehousing thing, we've had data marts, which have been dispersing data, copying data, making different copies of it. Don't talk to any IT guy about spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are wonderful, but how do you actually control them? How do you make them work together? Mobile devices disperse the data all over the place, and then the users go and change the stuff, and then they feed it back into the system, and who knows what's going on? Text, image, video files, yeah, they're a lot less structured than the basic data that we usually use. And then the cloud and big data, it's the same thing all over again, but even worse. So is this the heat death of the data warehouse? Well, as Hal said, I'm sorry, Ed. I'm afraid I can't do that. You do know the source of Hal, H-A-L? left character one, and you get IBM. 
So let's move into the 21st century. Let's try to avoid infanticide. Let's do some quantum physics, where we know that in matter, there is this duality, both particle and wave. Both exist at the same time. And depending on which one you want to see, depending on which one you want to use, how you look at it, you get to see a different thing. You get to do different things with it. In information, I put that duality as coherence and chaos. And the coherence side is over on the left. It's the data warehouse side. It's the information structuring side. And on the right, we've got the big data, the analytics, the data science. Sorry, guys, I don't use the word chaos in any negative sense. Chaos can be quite a good thing. It's out of chaos that new insight arises. And why do we do this? Well, let's talk just briefly about coherence and chaos. Um, if you want to look at something very, in very close detail, or if you want to focus in, or even do some, le some surgery, you use a laser. That's coherent light. If you want to go out and play, you don't want to do it in a laser light. You want to go out in the sun. You want to go out to where the light is chaotic. If you want to go and explore a deep cave, you do not bring a laser pointer with you. You bring a torch. And that's the difference between the two sides, the warehouse on one side being coherent, the data science on the other side being chaotic. And the reason we do all this is, of course, about meaning. We want to get the meaning out of this in order to use it. So let me talk about something that I call adapt, the adaptive information cycle. And I'm just going to change the words a little bit for a moment to have integration and innovation on the two sides. Because in a business sense, coherence and chaos doesn't mean a lot, but integration and innovation do mean uh, uh, quite a bit. On the right-hand side here, um, we have the innovate. And that, to me, is the, analytic, uh, the adaptive information cycle as, um, as expressed by an analyst or a data science. I'm asked a question. I've got a problem. I've got a situation I want to understand. I record, I collect information, I condition it, I cleanse it, I make it into what I want it to be, I utilize it in my tools, and if I'm lucky, I take a decision or I come to some action. And if I'm not lucky, I discover that I hadn't got the right information or the information wasn't all I needed, and out of that, I have to go around, I assimilate that fact, I go and record and collect some more information. And that's all great, it's very innovative, and it works very well. But if you want to put this into the process of the organization, if you want to make this work within the day-to-day -day concept of the organization, you've got to include IT. Now, yes, I know. IT is boring. But the role of IT is to take that innovative stuff that's on the right-hand side of the picture and move it into move it into structure, to integrate it, to collect agreed views, to condition the information, to utilize it, and out of that to create something that you could call a data warehouse. Whether you call it in the, in the future a data warehouse, I don't care. But it is the structured, uh, consolidated, consistent view of the company or the parts of the company that you need that for. That's all very well. It's difficult to get the analysts in the IT department to talk to one another, as we know. So what you actually need to do, and I couldn't come to an O'Reilly conference without putting up Web 2.0, right? So the collaboration that needs to happen between the peers within the analyst organization and indeed within and between the analyst folks and the IT folks, that collaboration is what creates the ability and the flow of information and process from one side of this cycle to the other. So the adaptive information cycle is the key approach to putting innovation into integration and integration back into innovation. So it's not a heat death after all. It's more about the birth of consolidated information, in innovation and integration. The big data approach offers new analytics and deep innovation. The data warehouse defines structure and integration. And you know what? With both of them, we get to move to the future. Thanks to uh, 2001 for all of the wonderful pictures, and thanks all of you 
for your attention.